stat site says you guys lead the country in uh, pressures and non-blitzes. Are you satisfied with how you guys are, are getting to the quarterback and affecting the quarterback right now? Through four Never satisfied. Never satisfied, but um, we are, you know, they are executing what's called, though, yeah. Yeah, I think, um, you know, we just we got to tighten up our coverage, you know, because we need that extra second because the guys are the guys are getting there, you know. The third row right here, Rob Holland. Jim, um, you lead the nation six point seven five points allowed, and yet you hear there's two guys who said something about leading the nation. <laughs> right. Both, both of you guys get it. Well, that's the point, and yet you... It's rat poison. It's rat poison. And yet you, you are hearing what's wrong with this defense. Have you ever had a defense... Who's, who, who's... I'm hearing what? What's wrong with it? Well, you're even saying that like, we, we could be better here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, we well, could. Have you ever been nitpicked as much as you've been here, your defense? Is that to be expected in a place like this? My father was pretty tough. He was a Philly cop, so... <laughs> I got more than nitpicked. I got nit whacked. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm used to it. I'm used to it. What would it take to be satisfied? You said not satisfied, not satisfied. Uh, zero points, under 100 yards a game, four turnovers, score twice on defense, and then it'd be fine. Then I'd be satisfied. We'll hold you to it. Okay. Behind Rob, um, Cameron, Steve Robinson. Jim, what did you like about the three linebackers that you the said that you put out early against Michigan State and? How do you want to see that grow or a ball, especially this weekend against uh, this one? Yeah, I, I, uh, I like the fact, you know, that they, that they all can work together. You know, when you have uh, maybe two guys and a nickel, you know, you're kind of in two different rooms with the three linebackers. They're all in the same room, and they can work together. And uh, I think their understanding and processing is going very well. What we need to see better is, is tackling, you know. Our linebackers need to continue to become better tacklers, and particularly this week, knockback tacklers, right? I mean, the, the, these guys are the kings of, in this running back, two, turning a two-yard gain into a four- or five-yard gain, which then leads to second and five, which leads to third and two, you know. So we need to continue to work on our tackling and, you know, with, a, with an attitude of knocking people back. Uh, kind of a two-part here, a lot of it, because we just heard a lot about coverage. For starters, could you evaluate your linebackers and how they've been in coverage so far? And then also, I think there's been a, a growing concern of how much off coverage you guys have been playing with the cornerbacks and trying to balance, you know, giving up some of that short stuff and just having guys who can excel at tackling versus maybe being more aggressive right. and having your corners play right. up in the line of scrimmage. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, the corners – off press, I mean, that's a constant thought, constant, constant adjustment. Um, again, we're, we're, we've been solid on explosive plays. So I think you can't, you can't forget that because that wins games, you know. And um, sometimes on those big, deep, like you take a guy like Caleb Downs, who, you know, we activated. Um, Saturday, and you know we're going to continue to activate him as we get into big time, uh, Big Ten competition. You see how what he looks like when he's activated. What you don't see a lot is when he's not activated. How many times they just don't throw the ball deep? You know what I mean? Because he's in the right place and on top of the routes, and they don't even take those shots. Those shots aren't taken. So it's the same thing with the corners. It's like you know, the answer to your question is: Do we need to be pressed more? Yes, we do. And we need to keep we need to keep working that working that in, but um, we got to balance it. Deep center, we've got time for two more. Deep center, Jeremy, uh, Jim, Ryan, and, and Chip sort of have a luxury that Phil Parker and the defense at Iowa haven't changed in twenty some years. They have, so they have a first time or a new offensive coordinator after a couple of years of being somewhat predictable offensively, and they're coming off a of bye week. How does that impact with? preparation you do and how, generally speaking how does an off week help a team prepare yeah it just gives you more time to just gives you more time to study you know I mean that's the only way I can put it, it gives you more time to study um, 
But in terms of what we do, you know, you have to go off of what you have seen from them this year. And then, you know, always with a new offense coordinator, you got to go back in their history and you got to look at things that they've done in the past that maybe you haven't seen yet because you're ready. So you're ready for it. But um, you really got to go mostly off of what you see this year. Jim, the uh, the play that Cody made on fourth down is that predetermined that he's going going high, jumping? Is he is there a read that he has there that it? I it's a call. It's a call. Yeah. Is that something you've been talking about? The number of reps that guys get in those situations is that a? You can't rep that. No, that's <laughs> that's like when I call this, you guys do that and you jump over the top. <laughs> You're not gonna. You're not gonna practice that. <laughs> you're right. I don't know how you practice that, Cody. Go up and practice and smash your head into Lincoln. You know you're not gonna. You're not gonna do that. So. Thanks, Coach. Yeah. Thank you. All right.